This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. Well, there might be some roadblocks on that road to Alec Murdoch's murder trial number two, if we even get there. You know, we're all sitting there going, hey, look, the coming soon signs are up. They're installing the plumbing. They're ripping up the ground and they're grading it. Well, this is going to happen. Well, we had a bit of a hearing the other day, one that is coming in front of the actual evidentiary hearing set to take place later in the month. And, well, the judge said it's probably not going to be quite as easy as you may think, Mr. Murdoch, to get to this new trial. Here to talk about that, what went down, Robin Drake, retired FBI special agent. Robin, what's your thoughts on how all of that shook down the other day in court? You know, again, first impressions on this one was there's no doubt that I think everyone has seen a lot of impropriety and bad choices by Hill, you know, the clerk of the court, which has caused a real firestorm here. But just because something's has a lot of impropriety and ethical questions doesn't make it illegal. Mm -hmm. And I don't I've tried to research this as much as possible as you can, because every state seems to be a little bit different on what's required for evidence for jury tampering Mm -hmm. and what the consequences of that are. And you get a retrial if that happens. I think those are all the questions that we're all kind of sitting back and waiting, because I think we're all seeing there's potential of jury tampering, but they got a lot. There's a very high bar to prove that just because she did something incredibly wrong and improper, did it sway a decision by the jury and by individuals on that jury? And so I think that's what is really up in the air here. It, it is. I mean, you have your attorneys who say have their own definitions of here's what I believe the bar is for this. And then you have the judge coming back going, OK, well, that's great. Here's what I see as being the bar for this. And it really, and that's what they're going to go by. It it very much, it it gets into the question of, well, how much impact does one's words have on an individual? And, And then here's where it gets tricky is how do we weigh that? How do we equate what they're saying out loud? Yes, this did affect me or yes, this didn't affect me into reality because i mean sometimes things like that you'll have a subconscious effect on your decision making or your choices just because the information is presented you may not actually know exactly how much weight it had on your decision uh, or not and how do you litigate something like that something in someone's mind to say yes this did or no this did not where you could cite a thousand examples that actually point one way or the other boy really complex questions aren't they Yeah. Complicated. Anytime things get really complicated, I try to keep them really simple because Mm -hmm. my small brain can't do anything but that. (laughs) The because, again, I don't have a lawyer's brain. I just kind of got the granular small guy's brain. What I think they're doing well here is I like that Newman recused himself, you know, Judge Newman here. Because I think what's needed in this situation where things are really complicated and they sound complicated, not just to you and me, but to everyone else involved in this. What's the real goal of taking a look at this? And that is, was injustice served or was justice served in the jury process? That's it. And I think when you have someone who's more objective, that's why I think Judge Newman recusing himself, even though he did such a fantastic job, he's too close and he's emotionally attached to the outcome that there was. And so having a new judge involved to ask that really simple question, was justice served or not? I think that's what it's going to come down to. And that's what they're trying to assess and try to decomplicate a lot of this. Yeah, that, I, I think, is obviously the goal in a lot of this. Judge uh, Toll ruled that he'll must testify, which will be interesting because there are other pending investigations into her. So, I mean, potentially she could take the fifth and say, I'm not going to incriminate myself. But at the same point, I'm really curious to know what she would have to say that would be really any different than what she's already said of, I didn't do that, I didn't do that. The judge emphasized that the hearing is not a trial on Hill, but focuses on her interactions with jurors and the jury's ability to reach that impartial verdict. So that, where I'm getting, or what I'm getting out of that is very much all the other cornucopia of BS that's been surrounding her, the... uh, not the jury tampering, but the the plagiarism, the things with her son, the improper use of her office. It seems like those sort of things aren't necessarily planned to be in here. I, I guess the only, 
Here's another interesting example. It's not planned to be in there. Look what happened at the Alec Murdoch trial. The financial yeah. stuff was also not planned to be in there. Judge saying, no, we don't have to bring that in. So I think it's going to be a very fine line for them to walk to make sure that those other things don't get back in here. Because I think the wrong thing said aloud and there needs to be a little more explanation. You could easily go down the road of character, but they're saying right now those other things not going to be in there. Is that fair for something like this? I have no idea. It's such a tough question. And it's a tough question because the thing that really pops in your mind on this is this seems to be the only case we've ever heard of this happening with a, a court of the clerk. Mm -hmm. Why? What makes her different? What makes this court system down there different than than thousands of other trials a year that this hasn't seemed to have risen? Mm -hmm. I mean, we've we have covered on your show alone in this last year a lot of high stakes yeah. trials and this has never come up why what is going on down there and that's why it's i think it's such a tough question to answer because we seemingly haven't really had to answer it before no i mean it's i don't know other than looking at the court system and this kind of the individuals that we've learned and met along the way Okay, this is a very interesting, unique dynamic that they have down there. And I apologize for interrupting yeah. because we've never heard of the court of the clerk. No. That role hasn't popped up, and why? It's not supposed to. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> supposed to be just an administrative force there. Let me ask a, a, you this. Very, go, ahead. go ahead. No, I say a, a very strong, important force, yeah. but one that's at the public trust. Yes. That is, you know, at the behest of the judge and the jury and to make things happen and function administratively inside the court. Well, she was certainly playing that role because everybody says she's such a nice lady <laughs> until all of this. Let me ask you this. Here's an angle that I'm, I am curious about. So you are going to have, you know, if you have that one juror that is saying, yeah, this happened. She said this to me. Everybody else says, no, it did not. But if you do get that juror that is able to say, yes, she said those things. And yes, it did influence my verdict. That I think is meeting the bar that the judge is saying needs to be met. We're all people. If you're that juror and this is sitting in front of you, it, it it's not necessarily always going to be looked at as a burden of, oh my gosh, I got to go do this. I can probably guarantee there's book deals. There's all sorts of money to be had. If you are the person that derails the Alec Murdoch verdict by stating that and and if it's the truth and that's what happened and that's how you truly feel then it's your story to tell and if you get to make money on it i guess that's you can totally go do that again going back to the being human part maybe it isn't i know nothing about this juror so i'm not trying to insinuate that they would do anything other than tell the truth but one would think that might be a little bit tempting to be the person that yeah i he she did say that this did affect me and now watch the windfall of attention that's going to come at you and probably somewhat profitable windfall of attention for at least a short period of time. I do wonder how much that may influence one's testimony when this comes into court. Again, I don't know anything about this juror. I'm just speculating. I'm with it. It's a huge amount and it's very subjective. And that's what I don't like about this. And I think it's unfair for a juror who is... Just like we all get called for jury duty. I mean, they don't, most people try to get out of jury duty because it's taking time away from time, you know, from family, work. It's inconvenient unless you get on something that's really interesting. It's just a, a part of life. And so I think it's unfair to put that burden on an individual. That's why I really hope they go back to making it objective. Mm -hmm. If you performed X, Y, or Z, this is the consequence because. You're right. Juries, I mean, the reason why they have people on juries is to get as objective as possible by having so many different jurors, mm -hmm. by going through such an in-depth interview process to, to try to rem remove as much bias as possible. The jury instructions, all these things are put into place to try to make it as dispassionate as possible while the attorneys are trying to make it passionate to try to tug at those heartstrings there. But when it comes to something that might reverse a decision or at least go for retrial, I think it really needs to be more objective because it's now placing a, ju a, a jurist or more in a lot of potential jeopardy that they didn't choose to have in life. Yeah. It's, it's really an injustice to them as well. I think it needs to be removed from them and say, hey, 
if the court of the clerk did X, Y, and Z, then X, Y, and Z, or it doesn't reach this bar. I, I don't know how they're going to do it in this case, because again, I, I think there's no SOP, standard operating procedure for chaos. And I think mm-hmm. they have caused chaos that they've never seen before, because there's no, I still, I'm baffled by the lack of leadership in this, yeah. about what allowed her to do these behaviors that got this whole thing where it is. It's going to be fascinating. And I think if in fact, Murdaugh does get a new trial, there's going to be a lot more investigating into Becky Hill and other cases as well. And isn't that an injustice to the families that already went through it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. One person's ego. It's amazing what it can, what impact it can have in a very negative way. Really? Sick of the ads? We are too. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.